BFF TV, Solomon Wilcox with Sam Monson. And Sam, it's a new day in Cincinnati. They have a new head coach in Zach Taylor and a new draft class in 2019. But let's start with the head coach and what system we can expect from him. It's almost as if the Bengals are expecting him to be the second version of the Rams, Sean McVay. Right. What kind of offense can we expect to get? Well, that's the thing. So he's one of this new wave of coach that's all coming from that Sean McVay coaching tree. We're trying to find the next Sean McVay and hoping that somebody bringing that system with him is going to have the same kind of impact that McVay had. But I think, honestly, this is a big year for not just every team that hired a Sean McVay disciple, but for Sean McVay himself and that offense because towards the end of last season, we started to see what happened when teams took away what they wanted to do, first of all. And, and they didn't have a great plan B. They didn't have a great answer when teams started to take away what they wanted to do. So I think it's a big year for that entire system to show that it can evolve and it can take it to the next step once NFL defenses start to take away what you want to do. And I think Zach Taylor was looking at that Cincinnati Bengals roster saying that you have the running back in Joe Mixon who had a breakout season in 2018 and now they're expecting him to really be the focal point of that yeah. offense in Cincinnati. So that means in the draft class, they came into the draft needing um, three really good players on the offensive line, at the tight end position, at linebackers as well, um, but they really needed some impact players on the offensive side of the ball. What do you see them doing in the draft that you think can make a difference? Yeah, we talked elsewhere on this channel about, you know, these, this tier of quarterbacks that aren't good enough to drag a team to the Super Bowl, but they're good enough to win one if you put a championship caliber roster around them. And we've kind of seen that from Andy Dalton in the past. You go back to 2015, that best Cincinnati Bengals team around Dalton, you saw that he could look like that top 10 That's caliber right. quarterback. Yeah. This year, this offseason to me was all about trying to recreate that. It was, let's get all these playmakers. Let's surround Andy Dalton with as much talent as we can, whether it's on the offensive line, a guy like Jonah Williams, the first round pick out of Alabama should dramatically improve their tackle position, or whether it's about, you know, all the other skill positions, retaining Ty Tyler Eifert, for the two games, he'll be healthy. <laughs> <laughs> Grabbing those running backs in the sixth yeah. round, you know, you double dip, get mm -hmm. Joe Mixon a, a capable backup, an understudy, yeah. or whether it's getting all those receivers around Andy Dalton, this felt like a, a draft and a, an offseason of trying to get back to that 2015 Andy Dalton. What do you think about the second round pick? Tight end Drew Sample out of the University of Washington. 42 receptions doing his entire college career at right. the University of Washington. When we think about tight ends today, particularly in the second round, we're thinking about someone who's maybe a little bit more prolific. What are the Bengals getting here? Yeah, I think it, there's obviously a question mark when a guy hasn't been used that much in college. And we've seen it elsewhere. If you think of a George Kittle, had extremely small numbers back at Iowa. But there's kind of a difference sometimes between the guys that had really small production because they didn't have a passing offense and small production because the ball was going elsewhere. And that's a little bit more the case with Sample than it was with a guy like George Kittle. But there's obvious tools to work with. And of course, this team still always has the faith that maybe you'll get that few games out of Tyler Eifert. You get back to the 2015 season where Tyler Eifert was healthy. And when he is healthy, he's the top you know, three tight end in this NFL, maybe top one now with Rob Gronkowski retired. It's just that you can't ever rely on that anymore. The Bengals were desperate to get a linebacker in this draft. They wanted Devin White. They couldn't get him. They wanted Devin Bush. The Pittsburgh Steelers soared above them in that first round to steal away Devin White. And it was as if the Bengals said, okay, we're going to be patient. They waited for the third round. They come away with Jermaine Pratt out of North Carolina State. Um, he was PFF's highest rated linebacker in the ACC. What are they getting in this player? I hear he was a guy that played safety, is a tackling machine, and maybe a great fit on passing down. Yeah, I think this team over the past couple of years has tried to get more athletic at the linebacker position. You know, this is generally linebacker for the Bengals. It's been an area they've struggled with for absolutely, years. Absolutely. They just haven't been able to nail down anybody. Even in free agency, they bring over Preston Brown from Buffalo. This is a guy who graded in the 50s last year. That's probably not going to be the answer. They finally moved, up, moved on from Vontaze Perfect, one of the least athletic linebackers in the NFL. But between Malik Jefferson last year 
um, Pratt this year. They're trying to get more athletic at the position. And if nothing else, I think that's the right way to go with the way the NFL is trending. You know, athletes are all over the field in offense. You need somebody that can run with these guys. They've dabbled with these, you know, unathletic linebackers in the past, and those guys just haven't been able to stand up to the speed of the NFL game. So I think they're at least getting the right idea now. We're just going to see if it's going to translate to the field. Bingo's linebacking core graded out by Pro Football Focus as the lowest uh, grading linebacking core in the National Football League right. in 2018. So they certainly need help. Um, in the end, did they do enough to help this offensive line? I know they got Jonah Williams, but they, did they do enough to be the team they want to be featuring Joe Mixon in the running game. Yeah, I think Jonah Williams is definitely a huge part of that. This is a guy that we believe the pro football focus is a blue chip prospect, a guy that can definitely come in, dominate from day one at tackle as well. A lot of people wanted to kick him inside the guard because yeah. mm -hmm. he doesn't have the longest arms in the world, but he dominated at tackle in the SEC going up against legit competition. There are other guys in this draft for whom, you know, strength of competition, who did they face is a real question mark. Not so for Jonah Williams. He allowed one sack in the past two years of pass blocking. That's impressive. That's a huge part of that offensive line. And then generally just increasing the number of weapons, the number of options Andy Dalton has to throw to. I think they made steps in the right direction. The problem is, so have other teams in the division. When you play on the offensive line, it's about grabbing and not allowing guys to grab you, right? Right. Okay, let me see you touch my shirt. Uh, see what short arms get you? <laughs> He's Sam Monson. I'm Solomon Wilcox. That's it for PFF TV.